So good morning to you all. Good morning. Um, as the chair of social, outgoing chair of social communications, I would like to uh, welcome you all for this press statement. Uh, at this juncture, then we will uh, welcome uh, one of the bishops. Uh, perhaps we can ask uh, Bishop uh, Agnolo to lead us in uh, short prayer. Then invite uh, our outgoing chair of the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops to start us off. Welcome, Bishop Agnolo. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, let us pray. God our Father, we are in your presence in the experience of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. The experience of the risen Lord gives us hope in all that we are going to share and discuss with your people and ourselves. We pray that you may lighten us and open the paths to what you intend for us so that what we do may be for the greater glory of your name and for the good and the sanctity of your people, especially the Kenyans. We pray that this meeting that is between us and the, uh, and the media may bear fruit, fruit that will abide, fruit that will bear even more seed in future to develop our country. We have more challenges and even that, Almighty God, the joy of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the way to understand and to appreciate that you are always with us. Abide with us in all that we do, that we may see your glory in all that we shall succeed in. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, thank you, Your Grace. Archbishop Philip Agnolo, the Archbishop of Nairobi. I'm Archbishop Martin Kivu Vamusonde, the Archbishop of Mombasa, and the outgoing chair of the Conference of Catholic Bishops of Kenya, who are this present team for the last three years. Last night, we had... Um, as our rule calls us, every three years, there's a new elections that take place. And I'd like to introduce the incoming team, uh, especially the, 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 at the helm. So we have our vice chair, who is the outgoing chair of social communication and communication in the conference. None other, but uh, if you know him, uh, uh, Anthony Muheria, Bishop, Archbishop Anthony Muheria, the Bishop of, Archbishop of Nyeri, and now he becomes the Vice Chair of our conference. To begin my coffee too. The great. The conference also decided to have a new chair who is none other than the Reverend, Most Reverend Maurice Muhatia Makumba, who is the Archbishop of Kisumu, Archdiocese. So from this team, they now take us on to share what we have been talking about, thinking about, praying about. And we also want to take the chance to thank you all, Kenyans. Thank you, media, and all those who have been following us and supporting us and supporting the Kenyan face, wherever we find ourselves. So without much ado, I invite them to uh, the chair to kick off this first statement of a press statement speaking to Kenyans, speaking to all those who see us or watch us or are part of us. Karibu sana skofiku. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you very much, all of you. We shall be making our press statement. The title of our press statement is Cry of the Oppressed. And we begin with a quotation from the prophet Zechariah. It says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. Do not plot evil against each other. End of quotation. We, the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, gathered at Russell House, Karen, Nairobi, for our Bishops' Plenary Assembly, greet you and wish you the blessings of Easter, a time of hope and of God's victory over evil. We thank God for many blessings we have received since the beginning of the year, especially for the rains that we are now experiencing. We appreciate the government efforts on many fronts like reforestation, campaign for care of the environment, and climate change, and also for the stabilization of the Kenya shilling in the recent weeks. As we review the state of our society and our nation, we wish to share the following concerns. The first one, the gradual intent to undermine the role of the church as a stakeholder in society. Our African society has always been rooted and anchored in a deep respect and reverence of God. This is enshrined in our constitution and expressed in our national anthem. Our common belief in God leads us to respect life and uphold the dignity of each and every person. The role of the church is to safeguard and to nurture the morals and values in society that this relationship with God entails. The Catholic Church, from, time, from the time our first missionaries arrived in Kenya, has all along continued to be truly committed in human welfare initiatives, in education, in health, and the uplifting of the dignity of the human person, irrespective of his or her social status or tribe. We have continued to complement government efforts in a spirit of collaboration and partnership. Unfortunately, we as the Catholic Church are noticing changing dynamics of the relationship between ourselves and the government. We are concerned about the deliberate intent to reduce and undermine the role of the Catholic Church and indeed all faiths as safeguards of morality in society. We especially decry this salvation in the fields of education and health. Number two, the dilution of the sponsor's role in education and in our schools. The proposed education bill, Basic Education Bill 2024, seeks yet again to dilute and reduce the role of the church in schools and other educational institutions. In fact, it is a breach of the original arrangement between the church and the state on how church-founded educational institutions were to be managed. Our history is very clear that many of these institutions were established by our missionaries who worked tirelessly and with great sacrifice as to set them up and nurture them for many years. Moreover, 
the main contribution was not only academic education, but a true formation of morals and humanity. This has given our country great leaders and forged the moral fabric of our Kenyan society. From independence, there has been a gradual attempt to wrestle the management and role of churches in the schools. The proposed new bill, now further, threatens this crucial role of the churches in our education system. We therefore decry and reject the systematic scheme to undermine and weaken our management role as the founders of the Catholic-sponsored schools. As a major stakeholder in the provision of education, we as a church have a right to actively engage in the overall management and supervision of all our private and Catholic-sponsored schools. Most of these were born out of the initiative of the Catholic Church. In the same vein, the proposed universities bill, Amendment 2024, grants the cabinet minister unilateral power of dissolution and merger, conversion, or amalgamation of private universities without reference to the owners, refer Article 38. It is surprising that instead of focusing on improving the situation in public universities, where the situation is dire, the government wishes to control and interfere with our faith-based universities. While we wish to follow the standards set by the Ministry of Education, we wish that there always be full consultation with all stakeholders in matters that affect our universities. <laughs> Number three, unreasonable demands for work permits for missionaries. We owe a lot to the missionaries who have served us in this country. Their love and sacrifice for Kenyans and for this country <laughs> deserves great respect and recognition. Indeed, they have been proudly Kenyan, contributing generously in all ways, and even many are buried in our soil. Today, many, with great sacrifices, continue offering great services of charity and social work. We are surprised by the exorbitant increase in the work permit charges paid for missionaries from Kenya shillings 15,000 to Kenya shillings 150,000. This is absolutely unethical and shows lack of gratitude to people dedicating their lives to the good of society. We are, as a country, in fact, should be showing gratitude and appreciation to giving waivers to priests, religious men and women, and other social missionary volunteers who come to complement our social engagement. We request that their work permit be zero rated. Number four, long outstanding debts of NHIF. The Catholic Church owns and manages hundreds of hospitals and dispensaries in the country. This we do in response to a God-given mandate to support human dignity no matter the circumstances. In partnership with the government, we have complemented government efforts to make health services reach the most needy. We have on various occasions raised to the government the very unjust fact that 
the faith-based hospitals are owed huge amounts by NHIF. As of now, this has accrued to over 2 billion Kenya shillings. The effect is that most of our hospitals are crippled and not able to operate optimally and therefore offer services to the needy. In fact, many are now unable to procure medicines and pay salaries. We now we are now in the process of shifting to the new social health insurance fund shift. Our inquiries on whether our debts will be honored have been met with mere promises and no legal guarantee. This is not only unfair, but totally unjust. We demand from the government to promptly clear the NHIF debts owed to all facilities that have provided medical services under the NHIF scheme before the transition to the new social health insurance fund chief. Number five, Dr. Strike. We recognize that at certain times, people must seek justice and equity. However, time and again, we have urged a medical fraternity that their profession is not like others as it touches on human life most closely. <coughs> While we believe there may be merit-worthy demands, we have always urged the doctors and the medical practitioners to place life and interest of the patients first. We still do the same. The life of a human person should never be used as a bargaining currency. Every life is worth more than any financial or employment gain. <coughs> we urge the government on one hand and doctors and clinical officers on the other to seek a working arrangement that does not put the lives of the patients at risk so that lives are not lost or threatened even during the industrial action. We ask the government to speedily address the legitimate concerns of the doctors. Our health provision is in the hands of the medical fraternity. We ask both parties to seek dialogue and settle the matter once and for all. We believe a mutual position can be reached quickly to end this unnecessary bleeding. The situation is deplorable, and we continue witnessing the misery of the sick. Many have died, and many are deteriorating in their sicknesses because of the current standoff. This is worsened by the inability of the faith-based hospitals to fully respond to the crisis, as they have been crippled by the NHIF debt. In the final result, the person who pays dearly with their lives is a poor Kenyan. Number six, high cost of living and overtaxation. On several occasions, we have addressed the issue of the cost of living and overtaxation. The reality of ordinary Kenyans is that they are struggling financially with which has often led them to mental distress. The last three years have seen a, a very sharp rise in the cost of living. At the same time, food produce has faked an all-time low price in the market. While Kenyans are doing everything possible to adapt to the high cost of living, 
the church stands with those who cannot afford to get food on the table, to take children to school, and to pay medical bills. Unemployment also is at, at its height. Moreover, we continue to be heavily taxed by corruption in our services systems. The issue of overtaxation should therefore be understood within this context. What must we do to support the suffering Kenyans? It must be our aim as a nation to make the ordinary Kenyans at least meet their basic needs. We have urged and continue to encourage the government to improve public participation in assessing its tax regime. That includes listening to the voice of the churches and other faiths who have been clear on what path may be most beneficial at this time. We ask that the use of the collected taxes be clear and the benefits for the welfare evident. This applies both to national government and to the county government. We should not intend to raise billions in a short span at the cost of great stress to ordinary Kenyans. We can develop slowly but with, with dignity. Number seven. Encouragement to Kenyans on their resilience. As we conclude, we the Catholic bishops, as your shepherds, are very proud of you, our fellow Kenyans. The resilience of Kenyans to withstand adversaries ranging from the cost of living weather conditions, sicknesses, has always stood out. This hope and positive attitude largely comes from our faith in God. As the psalmist says, this poor man called, and the Lord heard him. The church will always walk with you. <coughs> On the other hand, the government has the duty and responsibility, even as a godly and noble thing, to mitigate these adversaries and facilitate the improvement of the welfare of the citizens. They should also fulfill the promises they made to the people. This is the reason that the church stands as a sentinel for the morality of the society, the upholding of human dignity, and the defense of the very poor. We, as bishops, therefore express our great dissatisfaction of the situation of injustice these situations bring upon us. As we celebrate this Easter season, the recent Christ gives us a new hope and impetus to overcome evil and bring light to this world so as to build up a true civilization of love. We invite and encourage all Kenyans to pray intensely for our country, our leaders, and for all citizens. Happy Easter. This message, this press release, has been signed by me, 
Archbishop Morris Muhaji Makumba, Chairman of the Conference, and Archbishop of Kisumu. It has been signed by Archbishop Anthony Maheria, Vice Chairman, Archbishop of Nyeri. It has been signed by Archbishop Martin Kivuva of Mombasa, Archbishop Philip Anyolo of Nairobi, Bishop Joseph Mairura Okemwa of Kisi, Bishop Alfred Rotich of Kericho, Bishop Norman Kingo Wambua of Machakos, Bishop Peter Kiara of Marsabit, Bishop David Kamau Nganga, Auxiliary Bishop of Nairobi, Bishop Anthony Reri Mokopo of Isiolo, Bishop Celestius Mugambi of Meru, Bishop James Maria Wainaina of Moranga, Bishop Paul Kariuki Njiru of Wote, Bishop D Dominic Kimengich of Eldoret, Bishop John Obala Owa of Ngong, Bishop Joseph Matia of Nyaururu, Bishop Joseph Obanyi Sagwe of Kakamega, Bishop Joseph Mongela of Kitui, Bishop Michael Odiwa of Homa Bay, Bishop Willie Badlago of Malindi, Bishop Mark Kadima of Bungoma, Bishop George Muthaka of Garissa, Bishop John Binda of Lodwa, Bishop Hieronymus Amusugu Tijoya of Maralal, Bishop Henry Juma Odonya of Kitale, Bishop Cleophas Oseso of Nakuru, Bishop Simon Peter Kamomoe, Auxiliary of Nairobi, Bishop Wallace Nganga, Auxiliary of Nairobi, and Monsignor John Jue, Apostolic Administrator of the Military Ordinariate. Thank you. Hey, Hello, you